Silver Kill. Thank you very much. I'm well. How are you? Oh, we're all doing really well, and I can hardly wait to talk to you about this book because uh, I had a chance to read it, and it's such a wonderful book that I want, would like you to share all your experiences with our listeners. Well, the... thank you. I just want to, you know, this is a wonderful opportunity to spread the word about these beautiful dogs, and I can't thank you enough. That sounds good to me. And, uh, the name of the book, The Angel on My Shoulder, My Life with an American Pit Bull Terrier. And um, I, I know that um, you had wonderful experiences with your puppy. The name was Rumor. Yes. All right. <laughs> Where did, how, how did you come about the name Rumor? Well, Rumor is actually spelled R-U-M-E-R. -E right. Um, we spent nine weeks trying to name her because she meant so much to us when we picked her out. And she was so loved from the very beginning that we knew she had to have a special name. And we didn't want to pick one out just arbitrarily. Um, so we had lists and lists of names and couldn't decide, and I'm a librarian, um, so one day I was walking along a shelf at the library and I saw an author, her name is Rumor Godden, and I thought the name was perfect and it was stamped so beautifully into the leather of the book, and I said, oh, that's just perfect. <laughs> that, that's how the name came. Uh -huh. Yes. And how do you come about uh, your, your puppy? How, how did you get her? What made you choose a pit bull terrier? Is that what you always had in mind, or you... No. No, no, no. Actually, I didn't know too much about the breed. I had never met one. Uh -huh. um, this was back in 1990, 91. Um, I had just built a house and moved in. Um, to a house in Southampton, and it was a very remote area. And growing up, we always lived in Feeding Hills, Massachusetts, which was a small farming community. So everybody had animals and dogs and horses and cats, and I grew up in that wonderful environment. And I actually had collies and labs um, growing up, and I never knew too much about the pit bull. Um, but one day we were driving down the street in Southampton after we built our house and a neighbor of ours had a dog out in the yard that they were playing with. And we said, oh, that dog looks perfect. You know, she was enjoying the family she was with. She was having fun. She was jumping so high, catching a ball. And um, we said, oh, she looks perfect. And I said, I think that is a pit bull. So we started doing a lot of research on the breed and... Um, I, I've always been such an animal advocate. I love animals. I, I have a very big affinity with animals. And um, when we started reading about pit bulls and all of the bad media and the bad press and how it just showed that they're monsters, I said, I have to get to the bottom of this. So I did more and more research and um, actually found out the opposite to be true of what people normally hear and, and the stereotypes. And um, so they grabbed me because of the unfairness. I, I'm just a fair person. I, um, I hate injustices in, in the world, and, and it was just something that drew me to, um, to try to help these dogs in, in a big way. <laughs> Very good. Excellent. That sounds really a nice beginning. And, um, how old was the puppy when you got her? I'm asking this because I want to see if you had to go through a, a special training. Did you have a hard time? How did it go? No, actually, um, it was from an advertisement in the Boston Globe for um, pit bull puppies. Mm -hmm. And it was in Amesbury, Massachusetts, about two hours away or so. Um, so we made an appointment to go see them. And they were about two and a half weeks old when, when we saw her for the first time. And... Um, we had to choose between two of them because he was keeping the rest from that litter and we chose her and um <laughs> we we had to leave her there after we picked her out and it was so hard because we fell in love with her right from the first sight and um so we had to wait but he thought about eight weeks old but it was actually five and a half weeks old when she was ready to go because she was already an independent little soul <laughs> uh -huh. what color <laughs> was she she was, was an idea she was um 
like a vanilla color oh, with huh. bla a black rimmed eyes, like she was ma wearing mascara, oh. and a black muzzle, and some white on her chest. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so you brought her when she was almost five weeks uh, five yes. and a half. Uh -huh. Yes. Did you have to uh, train her? Uh, Actually, we were we were terrible about that. Um, since then, um, with the new two new pit bulls that we have gotten, um, we did all the training that they say you should do. But with Rumor, um, she had a free life. <laughs> Uh -huh. We have about 16 or so acres, and um, she was pretty much never leashed. She was never um, trained. <laughs> she she knew her property boundaries and never went outside the property boundaries. She was such a good girl, um, but she had enough work on the property to do. She gave herself a few jobs, and she thought it was her job to keep our horses in, or the fence on the property, so she would watch them all day. And... Um, and then she helped all of us with our, all of our plantings, and my parents lived behind us, a few hundred yards behind us. And she'd, you know, go up to their house and help them up there and come back home, and she did a lot with all of us. She was part of everything we did. <laughs> Very good. My guest tonight is Jolene Mercadante. She is the author of the book, The Angel on My Shoulder, My Life with an American Pit Bull Terrier. Jolene, I know that, as you mentioned, that... Um, the pit bulls have a real bad reputation, and there have been cases, you know, where uh, this, they have attacked uh, maybe their owners or other people. But your experience, according to the book, is quite different, and you feel that this is maybe um, a big mistake, a mis. Uh, interpretation and how, how what do you have to tell us about this i do know that pipples do bite pipples have attacked um but those are the stories we only hear about and that's what really is disheartening um other dogs bite as well and growing up i was bitten by quite a few dogs and actually my own collie was the worst offender in the neighborhood um, he sent many people screaming. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> and one one person actually that came over, my mother actually had to sew up his pants for him because she, he bit him pretty well in the in the back end. <laughs> oh, uh -oh. <laughs> um, so it's it's <laughs> it's unfortunate, you know. You only hear about pit bulls in a negative sense, and. Uh, the good stories about them are innumerable. Um, you know, they're drug and bomb sniffing dogs for police departments. They're war heroes. They're um, they they help uh, you know sniff out people that are lost. Um, and the majority of pit bulls live loving, wonderful lives with with families who love them back very much. Mm -hmm. I am going to play. The host advocate because I know what <laughs> I talk to a lot of people about this book and they say no, but it's genetic. You know, it's in them. They could be nice one day and then all of a sudden they snap out and it's in their genes. And I hear that too. Yes, you do. Yeah, I do. But you know, it must be the librarian in me. But I, I could never repeat or speak something without researching it myself. You know, I just can't repeat things that I hear other people say, and I think that's a lot of that people are just repeating what they hear and I would just encourage them to go to the library there are so many uh, great books on different breeds of dogs they give information if a certain breed is correct for a family or for a person and um, there's there's some wonderful books on the American Pit Bull Terrier or the American Staffordshire Terrier that give actual facts about the breed and a couple of the facts are that they were never bred for aggression toward people. Um, they're actually bred through the centuries to be extremely human friendly. They make very poor guard dogs. Um, what most people don't realize is they rate higher than the golden retriever in the American Temperament Society test. And their love for children is a specific breed characteristic. Really? So, mm -hmm. it, you know, with these facts, yeah. how, how, yeah. how, how yeah. you know, I don't understand how these myths of it's in their genes or you know they're they're it's a it, the aggression is in them how can that be true when the breed characteristics say the opposite but you know uh, i'm 
listening to to you and, and I agree 100 percent but don't you think that this is uh, this issue of the bad reputation is only at uh, here in just in USA because in Puerto Rico we have the same uh, stupid uh, Misconception. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and in your case, you have a, a spoiled brat. But it's been nice, you know. <laughs> well, you know, it's 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 really terrible because the root of the problem is people. Yes. Um, you know, we breed these dogs for specific purposes, you know, um, and then we blame the dog. It's like blaming the victim. We abuse them in horrible, horrible ways, and I will not go into that because you really have to have a strong stomach to even read about what they do to these dogs. And, um, you know, we expect them to be perfect and to, to act a certain way, even even through the horrible things we put them through. And it's really people at the root. We have to have stricter laws on animal abuse. We have to save them. This is what got me to write the book, what got me involved in Pitbull advocacy, because they are victims. And the victims need our help. They don't need more harm by spreading misinformation um, or you know, putting them to death um, by the thousands without giving them a fair chance and in loving homes. So would you say that the dogs in general become what we train them for, What, how we raise them? If, if we raise them to be um, violent and vicious, it doesn't matter what breed it is, that's what they will come? It become? can be. I'm not saying that will happen because, uh -huh. to tell you the truth, the majority of pit bulls who are raised very badly can't even be tortured into a biting a person because they are they've been bred for hundreds of years to be human friendly so like i said they make very poor guard dogs and a lot of them are found wandering the streets or um you know in the trash you know they're found in dumpsters constantly thrown out like trash because they they can't do what people want them to do attack or be intimidating guard dogs because it's not in their nature it's actually against their nature to do that Th that brings to mind um, that case of uh, that famous uh, football player remember a couple of years ago yes um, Michael Vick um, there are so many dog fighting rings and it's another horrible situation but because he he's um, a famous football player this actually came out more um, and his dog fighting ring was broken up a few years ago, and um, a lot of people wanted them all put to sleep. All of his dogs put to sleep because they went through horrible abuse, um, and they saw horrible abuse done by people. But a lot of organizations begged to give them a chance. Best Friends Organization, for example, is one of the best. They have a National Geographic special. And one of the dogs, Cherry Garcia, is in that special. And a wonderful New England couple have him, have adopted him since then. And they take him to different events around the New England area and uh, to, to show people how wonderful these dogs actually are. With all the abuse he went through, with everything he saw, he has scars on him, you know, which you can see um, from his experience. And he still loves people. And um, from little infants to 90-year-old people, he licks their hands and he takes pictures with them and he lives in a home with cats and other dogs and um, loves, he still loves. I mean, most people can't be that forgiving or have that much decency. So the dogs that have been trained to become fighters, dog mm -hmm. fighters, they can be retrained then. And almost and everyone. Go, almost, huh? that's yes, that's almost great, every you know? one of Michael yeah. Vick's dogs have yeah. been uh, adopted into wonderful homes. Oh, so great. it's proof, you know, it's living proof. I, You know, I can talk until I'm blue in the face. I can write until I can't write anymore. <laughs> right. But that's why it was so important to me at my book signing that I had at Barnes & Noble a few weekends ago. He came. The couple offered to bring him. And that was actually more important to me than my own book because he's living proof of what you can never argue. I mean, you can't even argue what he sits there and shows people. And um, I had so many people come up to me after and say, I believed the stereotypes. I, 
I thought they were monsters, and I met this dog, and I saw him lick my little girl's fingers, and it, he changed my life that day, and that's what I was hoping for. That's the only thing I was hoping for, that it can change people's lives, because that's what they 